Hi, Jürgen. Hi. Today, uh, while we're talking, uh, two bodies of work, two recent bodies of work from Jürgen are going to be scrolling behind us. One is called Heimweh, which means homesickness, and the other one is called Leben... Yearning for home. Longing for home. Longing for home. Is that homes homesickness? It could be. Okay. Longing for home. And uh, Leben, Leben und Tod, which is life and death. Uh, obviously, two extremely personal bodies of work, but that's the way you've always operated, isn't it? That there's actually no division between your life and your work. Well, there is, you know, uh, but, uh, but I try to make it as interesting for me as possible. Uh, and uh, I mean, many people ask me if I photograph something commercially, and then there, and then people say there's no division or things. You know, I did a I, I did a series of work with which, with my mother in the forest, walking through the forest, and I wrote a story about it. And obviously, that's entirely different than photographing for Mark Jacobs a handbag. You know, because I have to photograph that handbag. You know, so it's 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 entirely different. But I try to do it as uh, as as good I can be for 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 the client and 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 as interesting for me as as possible. I th I think and I, and I get something out of it. I get something out of this commercial work. You know, they 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 get me to other places. You know, I've been working with Mark Jacobs for seventeen years, and. Uh, and there's many things, you know, he became friends with Shindy Sherman, for example, and, uh, and, uh, and then he says, oh, what about doing a campaign with Cindy Sherman, you know, and I said, well, I, you know, I would have never thought about that, you know, and then I, then I just thought, well, actually, you know, what the fuck am I going to do with Cindy Sherman, you know, and I'm thinking she could do it herself much better, what am I going to do about it, you know, she's, she's been doing working with in, in some kind of way with costumes and with clothes all, all through her work, you know, and, and, uh, and, and uh, what could be my part of it, it would be just too boring to, f it wouldn't be just right just to photographing her in the collection of the clothes. And I thought, actually, uh, I have actually never seen her collaborating with somebody else, being in the pictures with somebody else. And then I thought about an actor. And I thought, well, well, what is this actor doing? And why this and this? And I just thought, fuck, I'm going to do it myself. So I'm going to be, uh, I was then in the pictures with her together. And, uh, and, and, and that was just fun. You know, uh, but otherwise, I, I would have never had this, had this idea to call up Cindy Sherman and let's do some work together. It wouldn't have made sense. Well, I think but I used this commercial thing for my own good, you know, for my own interest, you know. I think the most famous example of that is surely the, the work you did with Charlotte Rampling, which is an, an incredibly interesting combination of commercial and intensely personal. Well, I've been a close friend with Charlotte for a long time, and, uh, and, I, and, I, and I worked with her numerous years, and then Mark Jacobs asked her to ask me, what, what do you think about Charlotte being in the advertising campaign? And, uh, and I thought, no, she's, she's not going to merchandise a product, you know. That was a qu quite some years ago. And, uh, but I thought, mm, it would interest me too, you know, to have her photographing her for Mark Jacobs. And, uh, and I thought, but she's not going to do it. And I thought, how can I make it more interesting for her? And I thought, well, I'm going to... Why well, I'm not, not going to do the men's campaign at the same time. And that's going to be me. So it's going to be self-portraits with, with Charlotte Rampling. And... Uh, and then she, she said, well, that's going to be fun and uh, much more interesting. You know, otherwise, you just stand around holding a handbag and selling that shit. And, uh, uh, and, and, it, and it's a journey, and it's, a, and, and it's, a, and it's an adventure to, to, together, which I, which I create. You know, whether I work with William Eggleston on a, on a campaign or, 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 any, or other things. Uh, so I was extremely excited about it, and uh, and I wanted to have something very rich, you know. So I chose the the Hotel de Crillon, and 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 very much thinking about these famous pictures of Helmut Newton he did in these uh, lavish French expensive hotel rooms. So I kind of wanted to be kind of there in that environment. So I suddenly arrived in this huge uh, seven thousand whatever uh, euro uh, suite 
And I just thought it's so kitsch, just reminded me of my mom's living room. You know, it's like same Bavarian kitsch, but in a grander, more stupid way. And, uh, and I thought it's all the same. And in my excitement, I kind of forgot about, so they, they shipped over the men's clothes. And, uh, and, then, I, and then I realized I, I couldn't fit in any of these clothes. Uh, 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 I kind of totally forgot about that thing. I was so excited about doing that thing with her. And then luckily, enough, I couldn't fit in any of it. And lucky enough, they had these shorts, uh, sports, uh, how do you call it? Shorts. And, uh, and uh, that was it, what I was wearing. How do you get people to do... I mean, she did some extraordinary things with you in those photographs. And, and I would say that, uh, that has been... A, that, that is a signature of yours, that you get people to do extraordinary things that you wouldn't expect of them. Um, Kanye West and Kim Kardashian being two more people. How do you get people to do that for, do things for you? What is the degree of trust that you can inspire, do you think? It's very simple. I just ask them to do it. <laughs> and there's a, there's a church, I mean, there's a, there's a honesty about it, how I do things. And, uh, and a certain charm. And, and you see this, this, this either, uh, great idea, or the or the complete stupidity of the idea, or the or, or of the whole thing, and and then I'm very um, straightforward asking them. Now I, mean, I would never ask them to do anything they wouldn't want to do, or or put them into a, into an uncomfortable position. It's 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 very straightforward, and and you use a certain charm, you know, and and you're very open about it, you know. Because you have talked about how difficult it is to make an original picture. So what, for you, uh, is an original picture? <coughs> uh, I think when you, when you s feel and see the intent of the person who's producing the work, that's when you think it's... A, then, a, then, a, then I believe it's a successful work or photograph. When you feel the intent of the, of the person, when you feel that person coming through in this photograph one way or another. Everything, in a way, is a, what, what I do is a self-portrait in some form or another. I, I think um, it's interesting that, that you don't consider things like dignity, for example, to be an asset. You know, when you're taking pictures that, something like that, or aesthetics, you've said, you've said things that, you know, other photographers might have in their minds, like, let's, let's make this beautiful, or let's make this dignified. You don't have no. those problems. Well, you I think, very free of well, I think if something is dignified, I make it dignified. If something is beautiful, I make it beautiful. If something is ugly, I'm going to have it ugly. It's very simple. It's very simple. You know, I see things very clearly and, and, uh, and I'm brutally honest. You know, and, uh, and the people I photograph, they, are, they recognize themselves in the, f in, in the photographs, you know, and, and, and some people don't want to be photographed by me, and, and I have no interest in photographing them, so that's fine, you know, it, it's... it's. Uh... Do you think they see themselves as they've never seen themselves before then, when you take their picture? No, I don't think so. You don't idealize people, though. Well, I do, certain people. Who? Footballers. <laughs> <laughs> The notorious Pep Guardiola. Uh, I, was, I was only, uh, you know, I kind of like uh, gave up being nervous about people in, in, in terms. But then there was like a, a couple of people, which is like either Pep Guardiola or certain, certain footballers. And, uh, and uh, Will Ferrell, the, the comedian, you know, the film star. I was like, oh, because he's so fucking funny. Oh. <laughs> and... Uh, 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 but otherwise, you, 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 you just, uh, I, I do, I, it's not true, I do get nervous. Uh, when when we, uh, we started off uh, talking about the mix of life and work, how you make no separation, and then you said, you do, because you have commercial work, and then you have, say, photographs of your mother. But, but I noticed the juxtapositions you make in your work are very are very stark. Um, the way you, for example, in the at Pari Photo, the recent Pari Photo um, exhibition, you had, you had photos from a Saint Laurent campaign juxtaposed with tents of the homeless. 
And in this book, um, in, the, in the photos we're seeing behind us on the wall, you will have uh, another, I think it's a Saint Laurent image, but with a pile of you know, rusty old bicycles. You make these very stark con uh, contrasts, which seem to me to be a kind of political comment. What do you think? Well, I wouldn't be so saying so starkly it, it's a political comment, but of course I, I'm alive in the world and I see things and I make comments about it, you know, and they're, they're, they're more subtle than saying, you know, certain things. And, uh, and, and I use the world around me, what I experience, and, and I photograph it and I put them together. That, that, that is a portfolio which, which I did for, uh, st strangely enough, for German Vogue, which I've never worked with before. Uh, but they asked me to, to, to do a whole issue uh, and it's for their 40 years anniversary issue. And, and so they gave me the whole issue and they lured me in uh, that I'm going to be photographing Angela Merkel. And, uh, and I thought, of, co yeah, oh, of course I do this, right? Uh, that that's interests me. Well, then, unfortunately, that, that didn't happen. I got stranded with that stupid portfolio I have to do. Because she had to, you know, that was at the time when she had these shakes and the, and the whole uh, thing co co collapsed. And... Uh, and then, of course, I had to photograph fashion in it, and and uh, and I used Diane Kruger and 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 uh, Sandra Hüller, as, who was a fantastic German actress, uh, as a catapult to and as a famous Hollywood actress. You know, you 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 always use people, and I mean that in a positive way. Uh, uh, and then I made a portfolio of all these other uh, uh, famous or, or not famous. People, whether it's Gerhard Richter or, or Peter Lindberg or my mother and uh, or, or Lars Eidinger, who are actors, or all sorts of things, and I photographed landscapes over the years and and German food, and I put that in a in a portfolio together. And I got got uh, and, uh, and and I just was was with my pipe uh, with my publisher Steidel, where I printed this uh, handbag book, and uh, and I was just on the way to Paris and. And I missed the train, and uh, and I was on the train station in Göttingen, which is a university town, and I was really mesmerized about these thousands of bicycles just falling over on top of each other. And I thought, this is a good state. Uh, it really intrigued me how visually interesting that was looking. And everybody just walks by it and doesn't notice it. And I thought, this is the, the state in this mess we're, 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 we're living in. And, and living in London, you don't, you never see so many bicycles. It was thousands of bicycles, and uh, and I liked it how how the Germans use a lot of bicycles, and uh, and are much more uh, politically and and uh, and and uh, and uh, uh, nature uh, aware than than the English people are, and uh, and uh, and I like that. Would you would you agree that everything matters? Sorry? Would you agree that everything matters? The well, that's a quote from Wolfgang Timmons. Oh, is it? <laughs> yeah, of course everything matters. Of course, of course it is. Of course it does. So in your photographs, you give equal value to a I place don't, I don't, I, 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 You know, people say about what is beauty or what do I photograph, the, what is nice. I, I really don't care. I have the same enthusiasm. <clears throat> when I photograph food or my mother or a dog or, 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 or anyone, you know, or I, I, I put the same effort into photographing a handbag than photographing my children, you know, it has to be good. It's just, it's just simple. It has to be good. Do you feel a sense of urgency? Because I think that comes across in your work. You once said what needs to be done needs to be done. And there's a sense there of real compulsion, I think, that, that comes across in the photos. I'm fast. And I like to work a lot. And I like to do things and... and I, uh, what do you mean? <laughs> no, what needs to be done needs to be done. You know, that, that yeah. this must be done in this moment right now. You must take this picture. And, and it feels to me like you have yeah, no it's limits. Le it's, less about taking, it's less about taking a picture. It's more about I'm working much more in... In, in, in groups, in, in projects, in series, you know, like uh, uh, like 
what people say an image you know, it doesn't interest me at all you know it's about what do you want to say with it you know it's like you know i did a whole book with with charlotte rampling you know it's not just one photograph you know and, and you work for it for six months with her or, or sometimes i work on a book for two years or or, or sometimes i blast something out really fast but it's not it's never about one photograph as such in a way it's storytelling isn't it like yeah. you're, you're telling a, a huge and complicated story. Mm. And do you feel... That's my name. What? Teller. Mm. Yes. Story. Teller. But teller's also... <laughs> <laughs> teller's also plate. That's right. In German. It took me a long time to figure that one out. <laughs> uh, and, and you the, made, and a plate, a plates are, are, are a favourite subject of yours. Well, there's always these fucking plates around everywhere, right? <laughs> and three times a day, you eat off these plates. And then I suddenly thought, oh, fucking hell, man. I stick one plate in your hand, then it's a portrait, and then I have a self-portrait with you. And they do these incredible stupid things, these people, with these plates. You know, one is a discos, you know, one is like doing this Greek thing, you know, and, uh, and one... I don't know. It's 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 a it's a really good object. It's a really good uh, object. And then I started to take my, put my own pictures onto the plates, and then I just thought, fuck, I'm gonna like do one meter eighty plates, so sort of sculptures with pictures on it. It's a very good way to underline oh, the fact. That's that's basically also comes through. That was at a point when so many people start, you know, for y years. People start were copying me, and then they were copying my layouts. They were, they, you know, and everything. And and you know, I got tired. Well, what am I gonna do, right? And then I thought, fuck, I'm gonna do this plate thing till the cows come home. You know, everybody thinks that's stupid, but nobody's gonna be able to copy me. I thoroughly, that's belonging to me. If you understand what I'm saying, the plate, the perfect self-portrait. Yeah, I mean, if anybody else would do that, it would be stupid, right? But uh, I mean, you, mine is stupid too, but it's a good way stupid. But you, but you, 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 you have no fear of of stupidity, you know, in your in your. Well, pictures. life is stupid, you know. Life is is uh, is very difficult, you know, and it's very hard, you know, and it's and it's uh, it's, uh, it's, it, it, it's 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 tragic and it's beautiful and everything, and I want to show that in in all of my pictures, you know, and my my father killed himself in in 1988, and. Uh, and he was an alcoholic, and and and, and quite easily, it, it, I could have gone that way when I was living in Germany, and uh, and uh, somehow I just thought, fuck, do something with it, you know, do something with it. Was, you know, could have been, you know, do you th and, do you and you and you and you and, and 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 produce work, you know. Do you think that that actually has played a part in your life that you? That weren't very aware of. We were talking before about Francesco Bonami, the curator who wrote about you and said you were a bit like Hamlet. And Hamlet's relationship with his father was quite conflicted and he became this, he's the ultimate existentialist. And I wonder if you could, you could look at your work and see that there's a real kind of, well, Hamlet maybe quality, an existentialist kind of wrestling with existentialism that, you know, the world is chaotic and you're trying to make sense of it. Yeah, and some of my work is very tragic. You know, some uh, most of my self portraits are are, are very tragic. Uh, uh, but uh, also your relationship with old photographers like Willem Eggleston and Iraqi, you have this. You you are drawn, and Peter Lindbergh, you're drawn to these these much older um, practitioners of of your of your art. Do you think that there's anything sort of father son in that in that situation? I just had an exhibition with Araki in Tokyo, and I was really extremely moved by it, which is that series of Leben und Tod, where I, photo and he, and where I photographed my dad's uncle, uh, no, sorry, my dad's, my uncle, my dad's brother, <coughs> was then together, with, after my dad died, they got together and everything, and then he, 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 he died last year, he was old, you know, 92 years old, but my mum was always taking care of it, him, and uh, and she was sort of relieved after after he he, he died, and then so suddenly, and I was there, and uh, and, and suddenly she said, uh, and you know we come from this tiny village, and she says, uh, well now he's dead, and, and my mom is seventy six, and she says, 
should, should, let's go to the gym. And I was like, what the fuck? What do you mean, to the gym? Yeah, let's do something. Let's go to the gym. So she was like then on these machines uh, and she was relieved, you know, and she kind of, th life goes on and it was somehow positive. And so she's hanging around on these machines yeah. and it says life fitness. And I thought, fuck, I have to photograph this, you know, uh, while she's in that thing and I didn't even ha know my this village I come from has has a gym it was a, it was a, was a, was an old supermarket and suddenly there was hundreds of machines in that thing uh, and I combined that with a with a with a with a with a text I, I write up quite a lot in my in my in my projects and, and things and uh, and I combined it with the, with the last picture I played chess t two days before my uncle died and, uh, and, and, and that picture is in it. And then we went to Bhutan, my girlfriend Deville and me, we went to Bhutan and uh, around that time. And, and I found these penis masks, uh, which were two balls and this huge penis and, and the vagina is a, is a, is a, is a is the mouth and and it's all fertility and positivity and everything. So I started to do these self portraits there, and I thought the most, and I combined it with these with these pictures with my mum in the gym, and I don't want to explain too much about it, but it somehow it does make complete sense to me, and and uh, uh, so I made made this series, and Araki seen this kind of work. And he said he wants to do an exhibition with me. And from Araki, uh, William Eggleston and, and uh, uh, Boris Mikhailov are, are, are huge figures in my, in, in my, in my life, in, in, in what they do and, and how brave they are in photography and, 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 and things like that. They're very, very important to me. And, and, uh, and I'm friends with, with, with all three of them. And, uh, and I was so moved that he wanted to do a show with me in Tokyo. And, uh, and he said, no, 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 I don't show anything else. I want to show you, I want you to show this kind of work <coughs> in Tokyo. And, uh, and he said, I want you to go back to m your mother's place and, and go and, and, and get some childhood memorable objects uh, of, of my mom and my dad and me. And so I, I went there. And my dad, dad was a, and my, and my family, they're, they're uh, bridge, bridge makers for violin, double bass, and cellos. You know, the bridges for the violins. And, uh, and I sent all this stuff over. And he photographed them in the most beautiful, profound, uh, strange, theatrical, dramatic, and beautiful way. I was really moved. Uh, this really made me cry, not fashion shows. Uh, we, we, we're actually out of time, but um, I, I think the conclusion of that is Leben und Tod, life and death. You actually will always choose life, won't you? You will always celebrate life. I'm quite depressed too, as a person, but... Uh, I <laughs> There's a lot to be depressed about. Uh, but, uh, uh, yes, uh, uh, yes, I'll keep going. Thank you, Jürgen. Thank you.